Now the trade deadline has come and gone, farm systems are very much updated as prospects kind of swapped places during the trade deadline. Per every year, we're going to be going through a tier list and ranking every MLB farm system. Let's get into the video. If you're not already using SeatGeek to grab all your tickets, I don't know what you're doing. Century 17, the code gets you $20 off your first purchase of 50 or more. Special thanks to SeatGeek for sponsoring the video. Friends, welcome back to the tier lists. Five tiers today we got going rather than six. Elite, great, solid, mid, and then depleted was probably the best word I could come up with for how to describe a farm system that's just not very good. Let's start ourselves at that bottom depleted tier and work our way towards the elite. In my book, there's two, maybe three farm systems that are depleted. And I'm going to go with two. They happen to be in the same division, the Rangers and Astros. And you think about it, they went for it last year. The Rangers called up their two biggest prospects and Wyatt Langford and Evan Carter. Both have had some injury problems. But their farm system just doesn't have very much right now. One top 100 prospect according to Pipeline, which Pipeline's not super updated. But both these farm systems really kind of depleted. The Astros didn't really have anybody to deal from. And they had to get rid of an MLB-ready position player to get to the Blue Jays instead. Low Perfido having to be traded because they didn't really have any prospect capital. Not too much to say about those two. Let's go ahead up to the mid tier. In my book, there's probably six teams I'd put here. The Angels, who I was thinking about putting in depleted. However, they had a really nice return on that Carlos Estevez trade. George Klassen's a stud. He might be a top 100 prospect before the year is over. Samuel Arigetti, not quite as good as Klassen yet, but both kind of have some helium. So they're kind of on the up, still not great. The Braves, they got Schwellenbach, who's in the majors now. Smith Schauver, kind of their biggest piece has kind of been up and down and not fantastic. Nacho Alvarez now up on the MLB roster as well. They just don't have much to draw from either. Maybe some younger talent, but right now nothing super developed. The Royals don't have much developed either, kind of in a similar situation. They also traded a lot, but they didn't have much to deal from either. Bobby Witt came up and it was kind of really the end of that prospect influx that they had coming guys like melendez pasquantino wit guys like the a's also really don't have much their shortstop who just came up he got hurt rounding the bases but funny enough he's kind of a stud he's mashing in the in the minors but he got into an injury jacob wilson having a really nice year doesn't even really count their farm system's kind of depleted they didn't really make any trades either and then the cardinals their system's also just not very good tin kent he'll be fine quinn matthews got a couple of pitchers in there nothing really on the position player front that's developed yet the padres i think have an overrated farm system him. Ethan Salas is really struggling right now. On Pipeline, the old Pipeline, he's rated number six. He's the really young catcher, for those of you who don't know. He's about 18 years old. Really, really struggling in A-ball right now. Let's knock it up a tier here to solid, and we're starting with the Yankees. I think Jason Dominguez will be called up soon. Guy's a stud. He was phenomenal when he was in the MLB last year. Spencer Jones, despite the strikeout concerns, I think that he'll be just fine. A pretty nice power hitter in this league. Then Chase Hampton, he'll be a serviceable righty in this league as well. Just not super deep anymore the pirates also not super deep they've got some guys like bubba chandler here on the high end tamar johnson guys like that they dealt away quinn priester who probably just needed to move on they got a couple of top end guys but nothing super great depth wise similar to the dodgers not a ton of depth that's developed yet the thing is is that you got to give them the benefit of the doubt they pull prospects from nowhere dalton rushing being their top one right now catcher first baseman he's solid nothing much else out of that now in the old pipeline the twins actually do have a deep farm system it's just some of their names I don't love. I think they've got some guys on the more overrated side. Walker Jenkins, a, a draft pick last year. I don't feel like he should be rated as high as he should, but I mean, he's only an A ball right now. Got a couple of guys who are in MLB already. Brooks Lee playing shortstop and David Festa, right-handed pitcher. You got three, four other guys here in the top 100, but like Zebby Matthews probably shouldn't be a top 100 player. I don't know. I don't, I don't love their farm. I think the Marlins deserve to go here. Connor Norby comes in. They really went for bulk prospects and really kind of went for quantity rather than quality. They just got a lot back. They'll find something from there. High end wise though, right now, they got a lot of pitching prospects. Headlined by Noble Meyer, draft pick from last year. Uh, they'll find something out of it. Just, just hope they can develop hitters and not ruin Connor Norby and Kyle Stowers. Blue Jays, I think, go into solid. Loper Fido being the big piece that they got back, but he's already in the MLB right now. T.A. Dominguez has been up and down 
a little bit here in Buffalo. Really big, nice pitcher. Other than that, not a ton going for them. But they trade away a lot of guys. I expect them kind of similar to the Marlins to find something out of the bulk they got. Giants are going to go here too. Luciano being up in the majors now as well doesn't help a ton. Wisson Hunt, Hayden Birdsong, who I believe has seen time in MLB. Yeah, he's seen time in MLB this year. He's probably rehabbing, I'd assume, in A ball right now. 297 ERA, pretty solid. And then Bryce Eldridge, he's in high A ball. I believe he was a draft pick last year too. It's not terribly deep. I think it deserves, it's kind of similar to a lot of these ones. Mets are kind of on the brink. I think they could be put into great. They've got some guys like Jet Williams in the top 100. Drew Gilbert's going to be a nice outfielder for this team. He's already up in a AAA. He might get called up soon. Luis Angel Acuna, kind of an overrated prospect. I think that if he was not in Acuna, he'd have a different story to him. Brandon Spro. I mean, they got guys in the top 100. It's relatively deep. It could be into great. I would put him here in solid. I think White Sox go to solid. They also have some top end guys, but I'm not super high on some of them. Colson Montgomery being one of them. Edgar Cuero, who's in the minors right now, but they kind of have Corey Lee kind of popping off for him right now. So I don't know what they're going to do about that. And then Noah Schultz, another lefty as well. They grabbed some prospects return, but not a ton because they didn't get rid of their big fish and Kopech and Robert. We'll see what they do. I think the last one that goes in solid here is the Reds. We're no longer in the days where you got Ellie De La Cruz or you got Noel V. Marte, all those guys. They've all graduated. You still got some. Rhett Louder, Cam Collier I really like. We'll see if Arroyo turns into anything. I think it deserves to be here in solid, relatively normal depth. Let's move up a tier to great. I think that the Tigers kind of have a better version of the White Sox farm system. White Sox don't have a bar bad farm system at all and shouldn't be where it, where it shouldn't be with where they're at. Tigers have kind of have a better version of it. Max Clark headlines it. A couple of high end guys, Jackson Joe being the other one. Jace Young as well within the top 40. I like that. They didn't get a ton back at this trade deadline either. Like for Flaherty, it wasn't really anything. So we'll see what happens with that. I believe they got Trey Sweeney, didn't they? We'll see how that goes. I don't think the Nats have an elite farm system. I think James Wood still pops up on Pipeline. I wouldn't really count it though. I mean, he's an everyday player right now for that team. Dylan Cruz is really the biggest one. And Brady House as well. Dylan Cruz is such a monumental prospect. I feel like it could bring him up. After he graduates, you're probably going to see this team drop. I think the Guardians go here. They've got a couple guys within the top 50. Manzardo being one. One of them who they traded for last year. Chase the Lauder, he won't be up here this year though. And then you got a couple of really young guys, Jackson Chorio's brother, and then Ralphie Velasquez. You know that they pull depth from a lot of places though in their farm system. Gotta give them the benefit of the doubt. I think the Rockies have a deeper farm system than I want to admit. Chase Dollander, he's sick, but the thing is, is that he's going to be in Colorado pitching, so it's going to be rough. We'll see how that goes. Arizona's got a couple of really nice outfielders, funny enough. Then Jordan Lawler, who's a shortstop, and he kind of came up, had a cup of coffee last year. Wasn't really good. He's still down in AAA. Tommy Troy is another guy, another shortstop. Then obviously you got Drew Jones, so... We'll see how that goes. Brewers also always have a sneaky, deep farm system, really no matter what. I'm interested to see what the updated rankings have with this team, but it's relatively deep. It doesn't have anybody super special. Cuero, the catcher, really is their biggest one, but they got William Contreras right now. I think the Phillies deserve to be in this tier. You think about their guys on the high end. Aiden Miller might be a top 10 prospect within the next year. Justin Crawford is awesome. Maybe not enough power. Andrew Painter, when he gets healthy, he is disgusting. Starlin Kaba is on the rise. I don't think Mick Abel really deserves to be a top 100 pro prospect. His AAA numbers have been really bad, and it's kind of fatigue with him, prospect fatigue. And they dealt away George Klaassen, who's having a really good year for them. So we'll see how this goes. But I think that they deserve to be in this tier. Mariners always have a deep farm system, and this year it's no exception. Harry Ford, really nice prospect. Cole Young, been on the rise now. Quite a few young guys as well in this top 100. Relatively deep. One more for the greats. I think we go Red Sox. They could be elite. Kyle Teal is awesome. Marcelo Mayer, obviously being the biggest one. Roman Anthony is also kind of sandwiched between the two. Middle child syndrome kind of thing. It's top heavy, but it's top heavy enough to where I think it goes in the great. Then to the elite, the Rays. It was already elite. You had Cameron Arrow, you had Williams, and then they added to it. They got a bunch of prospect return back. The Cubs, it's super deep, and we're not even really counting Pete Crow Armstrong. Unless you want to, because I think he's in the minors still. And then what I still think is the king, I think the Orioles still have the best, even though they traded away a guy like Connor Norby, Kyle Stowers, who both were kind of MLB guys. Holiday's up in the MLB now, so we'll see how that goes. Kobe Mayo called up, but I... It's still going to be deep, dude. You know they're going to find stuff. All right, that's the tier list of every farm system. Let me know what you guys think. Have a great, fantastic week. Enjoy the baseball. God bless and keep them first. Have a great day. <laughs>